I gotta say, Griffin Gluck, who plays Gabe, got resting evil face. Oh my god, his evil face is- I believe him. I believe that he's evil. He's so good at playing a bad guy. Hey there, it's Kristen, and we're diving into the second season of Netflix's Lock and Key, my favorite show of 2021. That's right, I said it, my favorite show of the year. We pick up season two with the locks trying out the magical keys, hanging out with their friends, and actually just like living normal lives since the death of their father. But unknown to them, Dodge is still roaming free as Gabe, and has teamed up with another demon who's now infected Eden. In the last season, we had a ton of shocking reveals, and we really dive full force into those in season two, but in a way that really we, the audience, are finding out what's going on, and the locks, are kind of in the dark for a lot of this. The fact that Gabe is really dodged, the fact that Ellie is really the one who they threw into the Omega key door. And it's really interesting to see what is Dodge slash Gabe's end goal. I thought originally that the goal was to get as many keys as possible to like have all this control, but in this season we really see Gabe learning how to create keys, which ultimately leads to the locks learning how to create keys, so he can make like a demon creation key and make his own army to take over Earth. I gotta say, Griffin Gluck, who plays Gabe, got resting evil face. Oh my god, his evil face is- I believe him. I believe that he's evil. He's so good at playing a bad guy. That relationship between Dodge slash Gabe and Kinsey. I mean, it seemed like Dodge was really falling for Kinsey in some type of way and wanted her to be sort of like his evil queen. Alongside him is Eden, who has been newly turned into a demon as of the last season. First of all, Gabe is just like rude to her, but second of all, she also is very bloodthirsty. Nobody can control her. She's doing whatever she wants. Just the whole aesthetic and vibe of the show, the cinematography, the, the sets, the colors that they use, I think they just do such a great job. Like, I want to go to Matheson. I want to go visit Key House. They just make it look so magical and fun and appealing. Even just the town itself. We explore some really awesome keys this season, including the tiny house key, this key that brings about chains to lock somebody up, a key that uh, allows you to fly. And I like that we get to see all of the keys in action and the way that they bring them to life is just so beautifully done. Even just going back into some of the keys that we've already seen before, like the head key, the production design is just so on point. Something else that I love about this show is the themes that they tackle. Obviously they've dealt with loss of their father in the past, but this season they're really exploring kind of being able to move on from that and you see the kids are finding ways to feel better and to find new outlets whereas their mom Nina is still struggling and doesn't understand how they're able to move on which kind of the reason they're able to do that is because they're focused on something else which is these keys and the mysteries around them. They also play up this big theme of guilt. They feel like maybe it's their fault that someone got in the way of trouble when really that seems to be just a side effect of magic. We also dive into that idea of like loss of innocence. Right now they're in this very magical time in their lives but once you hit 18 you start to forget everything about these keys. And is that good? Is that bad? Should we be embracing magic? Is it too dangerous? Is it better to sort of live in that ignorance or to know the truth? But I have to say the thing that I absolutely, absolutely love about Lock and Key is just the attention to detail. They will bring something up and it might seem minuscule and they will address it. Nothing is left undone. Every loose end is tied. And I really appreciate that because you can just tell that the people who created the show have thought ahead. They know what story they want to be telling for the next few seasons and they're putting that into place. I find that so captivating, so compelling, and so impressive because it's just so exciting when you start to see these little like hints of things actually being addressed and you know you have that little detective board and you're getting the answers so for me that's one of my absolute favorite things about lock and key is that any little thing that's brought up you are going to get the answer to it and i love where we end the season because they've been sort of hinting at the past of kind of like where everything started with these keys since season one and they've interweaved this story 
uh, through these two seasons so far that culminate in a way where like going into season three, we have a whole new big bad. We have a whole new situation going on that is just so exciting. And that I think is going to help us dive even more into the history of the locks and the keys together going into a third season, as well as dive further into those ideas of getting older and, you know, losing that magic or that innocence of magic. And I think that it's just going to be really exciting. Lock and Key season two, my favorite show of 2021. I could not stop watching this. They do an incredible job with the effects and the magic and the story and just making you really fall in love, not even just with these characters, but with this entire world, this whole town, giving you these really compelling questions and answers and themes that I think are universal. There's so much that we can dive into when it comes to this show. So I also wanted to let you guys know that I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash kmaldo, that has an exclusive Discord just for my Patreons who want to talk more TV and film with me. So if you're interested, you can go and join and we can chat more outside of just the comment section here. Consider subscribing if you like my videos and drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on this season of Lock and Key. If you like this one, you can check out more of my Lock and Key videos right over here and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.